everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Safi Sprocket and today I'm going to be showing you what I wear on my motorcycle to help keep me warm in the winter months. Unfortunately, winter bike gear isn't very glamorous, but it does do the job and it still allows me to ride my bike in bad conditions, so swings and roundabouts. So starting with my thermal base layers, when it comes to winter riding, it's all about layering. Base layers are the only part of your motorcycle gear that should be touching your skin. Everything else, like your jackets, pants, t-shirts, etc. should go on after your base layers. Ultimately, normal base layers help us to regulate our body temperature, whereas winter thermal layers help to keep your body temperature high. You can buy thermal layers at almost any bike store. There are a lot of fancy brands out there. However, I buy my base layers from Primark because they're cheap, affordable, and they cost me £5 a piece. Now, like I said, thermal layers are supposed to act like a second skin, which means layering up once more with some regular clothes. I usually put on a short sleeve t-shirt over the top of my base layer to help absorb sweat. Even in winter, you're still sweating, so layering up helps to keep your gear clean. This is especially important for me because I have a gurbling heated jacket with internal wiring, so throwing that thing in the wash is not an option. Any motorcycle gear that's heated and has internal wiring is hand wash only with mild detergent, so you really want to layer up to help increase longevity of the item. I really love my heated jacket because I'm one of those people who love extreme heat, and the jacket has five different heat settings, so I'm always super roasty toasty. The other thing that I like about the jacket is the fact that it has wiring in the arm so I can connect it to my heated gloves, and I also have a wireless remote for changing the temperature whilst I'm on the road. The next step for getting ready is for me to tie my hair away. In winter I try to keep my hair tucked away as much as I can and I found that the best way to do this is with a low down bun. Then I either pop it into the high tail which is attached to my motorcycle helmet or I pop over a trainer sock over the top. I prefer my high tail because it does alleviate a lot of the pressure off my scalp that you get from ponytails and however I also always like to recommend a cheaper alternative to anything that I do so if you do have too much month left at the end of your salary you can get away with a trainer sock. Now once my hair is out the way it's on to my outer layers. I currently have the LS2 Nevada women's textile suit which retails at £400. It's advertised as a thermal suit online and I can personally vouch that this gear is genuinely the warmest suit I have ever owned. There are also tons of built-in zips, vents, slots, pockets and, well, removable braces that make me feel a little bit like a fireman. The main thing that I like about this suit is the fact that it's easily adjustable. Women's bodies constantly change throughout the month, so if you're a female looking to buy a suit, or if you're looking to buy a suit for your partner, adjustability is always something to look out for because our weight does naturally fluctuate throughout the month. Now to go with my trousers, I have the matching Nevada jacket. Again, the suit jacket has the usual ventilation, zips and jangles. Both parts of the suit do zip together, but usually I don't bother with the zip because I'm constantly removing it throughout the day to film. The jacket has three layers inside, one of which I removed and replaced with my heated jacket. Now on to my motorcycle boots. If you've been following my channel for a while, you'll know that I very recently upgraded my boots. So I haven't actually worn these outside yet. My previous shoes somehow managed to get holes in them. I have no idea how that happened. However, after soggy feet ruined one of my biking trips, I've now acquired some Oxford Tracker 2.0s, which are a boot marketed for adventure riding and retail at £100. Now, I think that's quite affordable for brand new off-the-shelf motorbike boots. Now, these are advertised as men's boots. However, I do have giant flipper feet because of my height, so they fit me just fine and dandy. Now that I'm all geared up, I'll throw on my helmet, which is the LS2 Challenger in high vis yellow. Now, yellow is always recommended as a winter riding colour by the government to increase visibility on the road. The lid also has a built in emergency release system for emergency services, and it also has a flip down visor for the low down sun. I've attached my GoPro and my center headset to the lid as well. If you are interested in this lid, it does retail at £250 off the shelf. And then finally, I have my matching Oxford Montreal version 4 winter gloves in the same corresponding color as my helmet because I do like things to match. These are some very extremely chunky chunky gloves and they take a little bit of effort to get them on, but once you've got there, you're going to have nice and toasty warm hands. 
I usually carry a few pairs of gloves on the road, especially if I'm going to be riding in extreme rain. Quite frequently, I will change my gloves at night time for my matching heated ones to help increase my concentration levels on the road. However, these Oxford gloves are always the ones that I opt for in daytime, for commuting, short rides, and basically any day where it might be rainy, but I don't really need the heated aspect of my Gerbling gloves. And there we have it, this is what I wear on the bike in winter. Now winter riding gear doesn't always make the most aesthetic, Instagrammable look, but at the end of the day you have to accept that you are battling the elements, and you have the entirety of summer to look cool in your leathers. But until then, just focus on staying warm, dry and safe on the road. Now if you like my motorcycle content, don't forget to hit subscribe. I put out new videos every single Sunday at 6pm on the dot. If you do want to help support the channel and enable me to make more great content, I do have a Patreon in the description where you can throw a coin in the tip jar. Until next week, ride safe, stay crazy, and my name is Safi Sprocket, signing off.